Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to make some brief remarks uh, about short-term memory and how it affects the information processing model I've discussed with you in the past. Um, we've been talking about in the past how information gets into our long-term memory uh, by the process of creating cognitive categories known as schemas and we store information in there about events and people and things that have happened and so forth. And the one thing that's incredibly important when we look at that information processing model is that it's about our attention. And if our attention is engaged, then we have a tendency, we have a chance, because we are so bombarded by incredible amounts of stimuli that we have a chance for it to go into long-term memory. But we have short-term memory as well. And short-term memory is where things that just happen as a daily routine, we're not really applying our attention in a really focused manner, and therefore, generally, schemas don't get created and information doesn't get stored. So as you can see here in the model, a variety of stimuli are coming in. It affects us in our sensory memory. Um, but there's some decay there because decay means we haven't been paying close attention. So the information dissipates quickly. Uh, we forget quickly exactly what we were thinking about or talking about or whatever it is, unless we do something known as rehearsal. Now, rehearsal is really what's important here, and we don't want to skip this because this is a technique that we can employ to make sure that things go into long-term memory or have a much better percentage chance of getting that way. So if we rehearse something mentally, uh, we say it to ourselves in our mind as we're reading some uh, critical information, something we really want to remember, we say it out loud in our minds. Um, when we write something down, uh, which seems like busy work sometimes, when you copy a term and write down a definition, that is a form of rehearsal. And that is why your chances of recalling that information, if you take those extra steps, goes way up. So rehearsal here affects our short-term memory, which generally is just a repository for basic things coming in and out, in and out. And none of that stuff really sticks unless it's grabbed our attention. So we do have a loss of facts and information, uh, a decay in other words. Now, when we do this sort of thing, when our attention is captured, say we're responding to a market stimuli like we are in the information processing model, they may have captured our attention. And we start encoding and creating the cognitive category or updating a current schema, whatever it might be. But on many things, we don't do that or our attention has not been captured. That's why this is such an important step. It brings our attention into focus and we are directing it consciously. So then we begin that encoding process which saves the information as an event memory or semantic memory or a person memory. And therefore, the chances of it going into our long-term memory storage so we can retrieve it, retrieve it later as a schema really does matter. Okay, folks, that's what I wanted to talk about on this topic. I'll talk to you again soon.